Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments, continuing with child, birth, and postnatal problems, B. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then I'll move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system, then I'll address issues of the skin, nails, hairs, eyes, ears, nose, teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, ailments of the heart, blood circulation, muscles burn, bones, joints, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small and large intestine, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney and bladder, then ailments specific to women and specific to men, then issues of the hormones and the metabolism. After that, I'll address the issues of homeopathic remedies on infections, infestations, and the immune system. Then issues surrounding fertility and pregnancy and childbirth, postnatal problems, special problems of infants, ailments and diseases in childhood, special issues of adolescence, and finally special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it's recognized that people will react strongly to certain remedies, and as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus or arsenicum album types, those who react strongly to arsenicum album. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and personality, and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, natrum your people tend to be pear-shaped, have a dark complexion, be fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of a stooped appearance, with an anxious expression and a craving for sweet and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual. And so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings. An account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet, general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitude towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I've completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas and procedures and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techniques without the approval of your physician. So let us continue with learning how homeopathic treatments can help with childbirth and postnatal problems. B. If complications are expected, it is best to have the baby in the hospital, but if this is not the case, a more natural birth method is preferred. If you have strong views on specific procedures or specific drugs, speak to your doctor about this at some point during the prenatal period. This is also the time to ask if there would be any objections to your using homeopathic remedies, as they will not interfere with any drugs that you may be given. First stage of labor. In the last week or so of pregnancy, the baby's head slides down into the pelvis, and this will in turn relieve the pressure on the diaphragm and stomach, but it will then increase the pressure on the bladder and rectum, and the whole vulval, air, vulval area becomes moister. Most expectant mothers will probably have felt twinges of pain in the past few weeks of pregnancy, but as labor approaches, these will become more insistent, more frequent, and more regular. The expectant mother may also feel trembly and chilly. Now is the time to telephone your doctor or the hospital. A sure sign that labor has started is the show, which is a dis discharge of blood and fluid as the protective plug of tissue in the cervix is shed. At the same time or shortly after, the membranes around the baby may rupture, 
resulting in a trickle or sudden flood of fluid called the waters. As labor proceeds, the expectant mother's pulse will become harder and faster, and her mouth may feel dry. Restlessness, nausea, and sometimes vomiting are also quite common features of this first stage of labor, especially at the transition, where things may come to a halt before the second stage of labor begins. During this first stage of labor, the cervix or neck of the uterus opens and is pulled upward so that the uterus, cervix, and vagina form a single tube or birth canal. Once in the hospital or when the midwife arrives, the expectant mother will be given a vaginal examination to exa assess how close she is to giving birth, and possibly an enema is given to empty her bowels. The old-fashioned habit of shaving the pubic hair is not necessary to prevent infection. The first stage of labor usually lasts about 12 hours in a first pregnancy and six hours in a second, but there are no hard and fast rules. Sometimes the first stage takes up to 24 hours or even longer. Sometimes the first stage of labor only lasts for a few minutes. Second stage of labor. The second stage of labor usually lasts an hour or so in first pregnancies and about a half an hour, half an hour the second or third time around. The contractions become stronger and the expectant mother feels the urge to push. It is time now for the expectant mother to push with the contractions and rest between them. It is common for the expectant mother to feel like her bowels are going to open. This is because the baby's head is pushing against her rectum. It is important for her to not let this stop her from pushing. As the head comes down, the birth canal is ready to escape from the pelvis. The expectant mother needs to go into panting respiration. The midwife, doctor, or other helper will control the head so that it slips through the vagina without stretching it too much or causing splitting. If there is a fear that the vagina will be badly torn, she may need an episiotomy, which is an incision in the skin of the vagina under local anesthetic. However, with good control and gentle massage of the vaginal muscles, an episiotomy is often not necessary, though in some cases it is to the advantage of the mother and baby. This is something you should discuss with the midwife or doctor beforehand. Once the head emerges, the shoulder and body soon follow. The baby can then be delivered onto the new mother's abdomen. Breathing is started by clearing the baby's airways of mucus and tipping its head down. The cord need not be clamped and cut until it has stopped pulsing unless it is around the baby's neck. Third stage of labor. This takes another 30 minutes or so and is marked by an increase in bleeding as the placenta or afterbirth is delivered. The midwife or doctor usually pulls gently on the cord while pushing gently on the womb. The new mother may be given an injection of pyoxin, which is derived from the same source as the homeopathic remedy, secoli. To make the womb contract and prevent excessive bleeding, this is a good time for the new mother to bond with the baby, have a quiet cuddle, and offer the breast. Baby check. Immediately after birth, the midwife or doctor will check to see that the baby is all right, although a more thorough check will be done later. The baby's facial features will be checked for Down syndrome, genitals inspect for doubt doubtful sex, and fingers and toes counted in the back will be checked for signs of spinal bifida, which is indicated by hairy patches or missing skin at the base of the spine, and the navel for signs of diaphragmatic hernia. The anus will examine to make sure that it is open. A finger will be put in the baby's mouth to check for cleft palate, and the hips and feet will be checked for congenital dislocation or club foot. After birth, once the baby has been settled, the new mother will be washed or asked to take a shower, bathing her vaginal area with arnica solution. 10 drops of mother tincture to a half a pint of warm water will take away some of the soreness and promote healing. After that, the new mother should be allowed to sleep or at least be very quiet and tranquil. At this time, well-meaning visitors and telephone calls can be very exhausting. The new mother will probably not feel very hungry for a day or two. Thin, thin vegetable to, soup is good on the first day with salads and fruit on the second and a return to her normal diet on the third day. Tea, coffee, chamomile tea, and wine are best avoided. 
The most important nutrients in the weeks after birth are iron to make up for lost blood and protein to aid healing and calcium if the new mother is breastfeeding. A mixture of blood, fluid, and mucus are discharged from the womb in the days immediately following delivery. After pains are common at this time and tend to be worse if labor has been relatively easy. It is quite normal for the new mother to feel very weary and stiff. Some women also find themselves perspiring a lot. Within 12 to 15 days, the womb returns to its normal size. After an episiotomy or a tear, the vulva and vagina will take several weeks to heal. Periods usually restart to six to eight weeks after delivery, but may not reappear for several months if the new mother is breastfeeding. Breastfeeding problems. Failure to breastfeed. Very full breasts are difficult for the baby to suck. If this is the case, expressing some milk before feeding will solve the problem. Sometimes the milk is too watery, or it may have a salty or bitter taste that the baby does not like. This can be due to emotional problems in the mother, or can result from maternal malnutrition, or the mother may be eating salty or strongly spiced foods, strong tea, chamomile tea, or drugs, which give an odd taste to her milk. Sometimes the mother needs to be nurtured by another female figure, her own mother, for example, before she can produce enough milk. Difficulties may also increase with successive babies. Constitutional homeopathic treatment can sometimes help, but in the meantime, one of the remedies that follow should be tried. Specific remedies for baby refusing milk or vomiting to be taken four times daily for up to three days. Poor quality milk, mother large and prone to chills and sweats. Use Calcarea 30C. If downward movements while nursing cause baby to scream, use Borax 30C. If baby is thin with a large sweaty head and vomits after feeding, use Cilicia 30C. Sudden excessive milk production in a young healthy mother, use Aconite 30C. Breasts hard and swollen, use Bryonia 30C. Overproduction of milk, mother young, timid and weepy, use Pulsatilla 30C. Engorgement. If the baby refuses to feed or if the new mother decides to stop breastfeeding, the breasts can become painfully descended with milk. Expressing milk provides immediate relief, but one of the remedies that follow should also be taken. Specific remedies to be taken every four hours until engorgement passes. Feeling weepy and sensitive to cold, hating to be in stuffy rooms, use Pulsatilla 30C. Extreme sensitivity to cold, cold sweats, tendency to be overweight, use Calcarea 30C. Exhaustion from breastfeeding. Exhaustion from breastfeeding is an unusual reaction, but can occur because of the fluid loss that breastfeeding entails. In addition to the remedies that follow, you could try expressing some milk so that your partner can give one of the night feedings. Specific remedies, to be taken every four hours for up to 10 doses, China 30C. Specific remedies for hardness of the breast, to be taken every hour for up to 10 doses. Suspected breast abscess or mastitis, use Bryonia 30C. Suspected breast abscess or mastitis with red streaks on the skin, use Belladonna 30C. If neither bry Bryonia or Belladonna help, use Calcarea 30C. Specific remedies, loss of milk, to be taken four times daily for up to three days. Remedy of first resort if milk production stops, use Agnes 6C. If Agnes fails and milk stops after exposure to cold, breasts are swollen, sore, and sensitive, use Dulcamara 6C. If Dulcamara fails, use Pulsatilla 6C. If due to grief, use Ignatia 6C. If due to anger, use Chamomile 6C. If due to shock or fright, use Aconite 30C. If due to jealousy, use Hyosiamus 6C. If due to extreme joy, use coffee, 6C. Sore or cracked nipples. After each feed, 
Bathe the nipples with Arnica solution, 10 drops of the mother tincture and a half a pint of boiled and cooled water. Then dry them thoroughly and apply calendula cream. One of the remedies that follows should also be taken. Specific remedies to be taken every four hours for up to six doses. Nipples inflamed and very tender to the touch. Use chamomile 6C. Sore nipples, especially if associated with grief, use Ignatia 6C. Sore nipples, especially if the mother is timid and weepy, use Pulsatilla 6C. Pain and soreness made worse by exposure to cold, use Aconite 6C. Cracked nipples that cause smarting, burning pain, use Sulfur 6C. Nipples cracked and sore with blisters on them, use Graphites 6C. Cracked nipples associated with plentiful milk production and distended breasts, although milk is poor and baby dislikes it. Use Calcarea 6C. Ulcerated nipples. Use Silica 6C. I have a great many videos now on many different topics, so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.